I was like, oh, everybody told me. I mean, people told me I sucked. Like, people told me to quit. That people said everybody wants to do voiceover. You're never gonna make it. It's something that everyone wants. And I was like, well, I'm. I my grandma gave me this false sense of security because she told me I was so great. Typical Mexican grandmother, you know. She just like encouraged the <laughs> hell out of me. So I I could not be swayed. I was like, no, my grandma thinks I'm amazing. So no, I'm. But you <laughs> are amazing, right? And you know, so and I tell you this all the time. I've known you for years from Curious George, working together and. You, when you come in that room, you light up the room. Dress to the nines, y'all. Oh, <laughs> I have a nice robe on. I have a nice robe on. I mean, come and dress like she just walked off the set <laughs> of Hollywood oh, and comes in and is just so delightful. And her voices are just delicious. It's road time. Welcome to Rolanda On Demand. I love my podcast because we not only tackle the tough issues of the day, but we deal with hot topics, celebrity interviews, and information that can help you in your business or relationships. This is Rolanda On Demand. Hey there, and thank you so much for joining me today here on Rolanda On Demand. I'm so excited about my guest. I get to work with her on Curious George, and she is just one of the tops in the voice acting business. Her name is Gray DeLee, or Gray Griffin, but she is one of the best. Take a listen to all the voices that many of us grew up on. Dance fair where he's supposed to be? Or not available like he's putting work before his family again? No, I'll either talk to him when he gets here or yell at him when he gets home. Hey, Max, I've been waiting all week for this. Reserved, huh? Pretty nice, Max. Thank you, Mr. Goofy. And I'd just like to say, I, for one, am glad you're our waiter. Mwah. I'm sorry I don't speak gibberish. Never mind, I'll find it myself. I'm here to join. It's been my dream since I was a cub. My name is Chitara. Of... I... don't have a clan. But this is my home, too. I want to help save it. I know I can. Well, I'm 15. Practically. In eight months. That's all they think I can do. Come on, boys. Let's go. You're what stands between me and my gumball! <laughs> you know something? You have a whole world inside of your head. You know, I was listening to your stuff. Girl, you have so many voices, Gray. You know, it, one of the things I love about voice acting is how many places our imagination gets to go. And you actually score these things. These, you know, most of us are doing auditions and letting our imaginations go. <laughs> but you are out there booking. This must be, I mean, has this, was this something you always wanted to do when you grew up? I mean, how did you, you really have made a mark on this industry? Sometimes I can't, I look back and go, oh yeah, like somebody will send me a picture from 20 years ago and uh, some character and I'm like, oh yeah, and then I was like, geez, I've been at this a while. <laughs> but no, I was just a little girl being raised by my grandmother in San Diego, you know, and um, I mean, we were dirt poor. We would take, you know, penny rolls to the McDonald's. We lived by an Arby's and my grandma would, I was just telling my son the other day, because he was like, oh, Arby's. I was like, it's so good. Have you been to Arby's? I, <laughs> I should be trying to get him to eat healthy, but I'm like, I said, Grandma and I used to make like eight sandwiches. We would buy one loaf of white bread and then we would get one roast beef RB sandwich. And I'm telling you, I, we had a sandwich for lunch every day from that from that one loaf of bread for both of us. For oh my God. They put really? So much, they put so much meat in there. <laughs> but anyway, I was like, anyway, um, but no, I, my grandma raised me and, um, and I, I slept in her bed with her. I didn't even have my own room until I was like 15. I moved in with my mom. Um, wow. But uh, yeah, it was just, I, 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 I did weird voices and my grandma used to, she encouraged everything I did. You know, I would, she worked at a factory and she, and so, and so to, for childcare after school, she got me involved in plays because it was just a ruse to get somebody to watch me until, you know, <laughs> 630. <laughs> so right. it was very smart. Um, and she could tell I, you know, had a bent in that direction, but yeah, but she's Mexican. So she taught me all these, you know, Spanish boleros. And I would sing these like very serious songs at Mexican weddings for a long time when I was little. And, um, you know, so she knew I was like 
you know, fun and theatrical. So she got me to that and then bought me a boom box. So I would like make radio plays, you know, that was my toy was that boom box. I was always like recording myself and playing things back and then doing a different voice and trying to play those things together. And, you know, it would keep me busy all day. So, um, I had no idea. Also, I, I, I scream a lot in Hollywood. Like I, I, in a you do. blood curdling scream. <laughs> and a funny thing happened was I was um, <laughs> like in second grade and I was just like, I need to practice my screams. So I, I left the class with a hall pass, went into the girl's bathroom and just started bloody murder screaming. And the, this, this, you know, janitor ran in and like two teachers ran in and like, what's wrong? And I was like, <laughs> and they were like, what are you doing? And I was like, <laughs> I was Scream. Like, that is nuts. My Michelle was going, why would you do that? And I go, I don't know. I mean, I really didn't know. <laughs> because I'm going to be an award-winning voice actor. <laughs> well, I know that would be like my calling card someday. But yeah, I, I just, I guess I just like knew somewhere in there that that was my strength because I would do impressions of all my grandmother's friends and you know waitress sometimes it was not good like there was a lady at a restaurant you know laughing like <laughs> she had this really annoying voice and i was just sitting there listening and i was like <laughs> like did it back at her my grandma was like oh god don't do that you know <laughs> Can I get that? That's anyway. hilarious. You said a couple of things there that were so important that, you know, you were behind that mic as a kid and you tapped into what you were. Isn't that crazy that the things that you do now, you look back and you see and the beautiful thing of your grandmother giving you that microphone, you know, you think I used to talk so much as a kid. My father used to give me a, a little tape recorder and he'd say, go in your room and tell me the story, make up all the voices, give me the sound effects. And I would go up there, make up voices and do the sound of it. And that's what I do today. It's amazing when you look back at the little things that give you that hint. When, I'm, when people are like reinventing themselves and I'm trying to help them find the next step, I always say, go back to what it was you loved as a child. What were the crazy things that you thought were your faults that turned out to be your greatest gift? I'd, I'd say it all the time. I was like, your, your best hair color is what your hair color was when you were five. And also, <laughs> and also your best like self is what you were interested in when you were five, what you wanted to be when you grew up. And it's so funny in class, I put entertainer. That's what I put for, I remember that was our first assignment. I think it was preschool, maybe kindergarten. And, it, and I always think back to that and I think, wow. And it's funny because I'm not just a singer or just a voiceover person or just a, I do stand up comedy. I do, I mean, I do a lot of different things. So I was like, yeah, I didn't put actress. I didn't put singer. I put entertainer. So it's like mm -hmm. as, as that young age I saw the whole picture of everything I wanted to do so that's yeah. beautiful you're such a great mom I know or how are you encouraging your kids are you passing on that type of oh my god I am I you know I always I feel like the problem with parents today and I mean let me get on my but a lot of my <laughs> friends they'll say oh you know my son isn't outgoing like because my son texts my 13 year old he's an artist and an actor and he's very out there you know wait a minute wait a minute I think I remember him in the womb uh, you, I think back in Curious know. George yes. set <laughs> that I was studio you. yes oh my um, god yeah well wait maybe that was Harlan it might you might be thinking of my middle son he's six but yeah I remember seeing you pregnant for the I don't know we've been I doing Curious for George time. for a long time <laughs> <laughs> I have three children any of them. I think quite a bit <laughs> three years of my life. Um, no, but he, you know, but my, my friends would say, I want my son to be outgoing like him when they would have like a very reserved boy that, and Tex would say, oh, because she would go, I want to get him to improv with, 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 you know, get him into the classes that Tex is doing. It's look how, how outgoing Tex is. And I said, no, we, we look at our children's strength and we pushed, we, we, we encouraged that whatever they were leaning toward. We don't, mm -hmm. but she's like, well, I think it'll make the, my, my shy child more outgoing when really it was just torturing this poor shy kid. Poor time, I know. Classes. I'm like, he likes, you know, science, get him into science camp. He likes, he likes, you know, th that's not his strength. Now you're just reinforcing the fact that he's like, I'm mediocre. I'm not as good as these people. Mm -hmm. uh, now I'm uncomfortable. Say, honey, you're a producer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like fun yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, so I, I always, I think a lot of parents think, oh, I'm going to balance my child out by making them well-rounded. So if they're shy, I'm going to put them into acting. And if they're, you know, if they like bike riding, I'm going to make sure they also love to paint, you know, and it's like, no, just whatever they like to do, just encourage that. That's what my grandma did. She didn't even know she was the best mom in the world, but she was. And, and it's <laughs> funny because I tell people, they're like, how did you have such an iron will when you got to LA? Because I was like, oh, everybody told me, I mean, people told me I sucked. Like, people told me to quit. That People said, everybody wants to do voiceover. You're never going to make it. It's something that everyone wants. And I was like, well, I'm 
I, my grandma gave me this false sense of security because she told me I was so great. Typical Mexican grandmother, you know, she just like encouraged the <laughs> hell out of me. So I, I could not be swayed. I was like, no, my grandma thinks I'm amazing. So no, I'm. But you <laughs> are amazing. Right? And, you know, so, and I tell you this all the time. I've known you for years from Curious George working together. And you, when you come in that room, you light up the room. Dress to the nines, y'all. <laughs> <That'd> be- <laughs> robe on I have a nice robe <laughs> I mean come and dress like she just walked off the set <laughs> of Hollywood oh and comes in and is just so delightful and her voices are just delicious how do you um well, well before we get to how you break down a script and how you approach the characters and the delicious juicy stuff you find about the business I remember it took a good friend to push you to really go into the voice business how you know people always wonder what was that moment when you were in the voice business, you know, you were, you were there now. Did it start with the stand-up comedy and then turn into the voice? It did. Well, I, the funny thing is, is when I was in fine art school all growing up and I did this um, video for the Nancy Reagan produced called Don't Say Yes When You Really Mean No. She came to our high school and was like, we're going to do a movie here for the Just Say No program. And I was like, and I landed the role and it's, it's, you can find it sometimes on YouTube. It's really embarrassing. And I pay this girl candy who talked like this. And she was like really into drugs and she was trying to get the girl to go do drugs. And it was, really, it was kind of funny. Um, anyway, but there was a, the producer knew a guy that was casting this Caboodles Beauty Organizers commercial. And he said, oh, I know a girl. She's, she's non-union, but she's in this video because she's just, I was only 14. So he said, you know, but she can talk really fast. And I think she'd be great for this. So I showed up, read the script, did it like five times with no mistakes. And he's like, can you do it? He's like, actually, you're too fast. Can you do it a little slower? But they couldn't find a 14-year-old girl to talk so fast. So I did it slower. And he's like, honey, I think you have. He's called me honey. I was like, I allowed it because I was 14. <laughs> well, back um, then. Now I'd be like, no. Um, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, but, he, uh, but he said, you, you could have a future in this. I, you got through that script with no problems. You think very quickly. You took direction really quickly. You should look into this. And then when I got the check, I was like, oh, my God. I, I did, like, maybe, I don't know, like, eight spots or something. And I got, like, $6,000 or $5,000 maybe. Anyway, I put it down on a little car and I re I, it was a mess of a car, but we, we fixed it up and everything. And I had a car for when I graduated high school and I was thinking voiceover, this is a good thing. This is like really easy. I was good at it. I mean, I just remember that. Then I went to theater school. I wanted to be a stand up comic. I'd always done comedy. Like as a kid, I always would like memorize the tonight show monologue and do it for my grandma in the morning while she was getting ready. And, oh, you know, wow. And then in high school I did impressions and stand up, but I was stealing everyone's acts. I hadn't written my own jokes. I was just stealing everybody else. <laughs> I, did, I didn't realize, you know, as a kid, I was like, I'm cute. Because people were like, that's so cute. Oh, my God, yes. You know, and then, you know. Um, so, so then I came to L.A. and started doing stand-up, but, you know, just doing open mics and stuff. And this lady said, your impressions are great. You need to write your own jokes, and you need to write good jokes, you know, so take some time. She's like, but while you're working on your stand it was it was Mitzi Shore at the comedy store. Um, what? Yeah. So she said, go do some voiceover classes and, 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 or like do voiceover, do cartoons and then work on your comedy and come back. Well, it only took me like 22 years to come back because <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I went and did it and I was like, oh, I love this. I remember voiceovers are great. And then it just kind of, it really took off like pretty much right away after that. I, I, uh, so. well, Gray, I have always said that if I had known about the beauty of the voice acting business long before my talk show, long before my news days, I would have, I would have taken that career, just that alone. It's just so, I think it's so rewarding. It just covers so many different aspects of you as an artist. You get your comedy, you get your, you know, you get to work with so many different people and be so much more than your body could be, you know, alone. Being pre- I was, you know, nine months pregnant, worked the entire time, and I could play the little old lady still. It didn't matter what I looked like. I could still be the little old lady. And I could be like the, you know, cute, like, teenager, you know, just like really into my friends. And, really and cat like, woman. That's yeah. my favorite. Oh, yes, meow. Yes. And, um, but yeah, I can play like 14 year old boys or whatever, like skateboarding and stuff. And like, you know, I don't know. I just like, <laughs> didn't matter how pregnant I was or whatever. I, and all my friends who were in comedy who I was like, oh, maybe I should have stayed. They're like, no, you did the right path. You, you did the thing. On your you own did turn. the right thing. Yeah. Great success. Comedy does not pay that well. <laughs> no, it doesn't. But you <laughs> know something. Special. 
it doesn't no it doesn't pay you know the, what 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 you hope happen is you get your netflix special yeah, you get on you get your sitcom and it just there's nothing like doing stand up comedy that's just yes. great stuff the that's rush just is so stuff. good that's the payoff you know so i'm glad that i have like a career that i can go sure i'll fly into you know nashville for 2 days and do a couple nights at zanies and then you know is it zanies i think yeah um anyway but um then then come back home and not have to worry about making any money <laughs> I know. Well, you know something. I was. I had a show at planned at Gotham. We were about to go on a 420 cannabis comedy tour. There was so much going on, and then COVID hit. The rug is pulled out. Have you found that that well? The voice business continues. I mean, you, because you we're working from home. Oh my gosh. Well, I had built this really expensive studio for my ex-husband and then we got this bitter divorce and I was so <laughs> mad, you know, and I was like, I spent all that money on that studio. I'm so angry. And so then when all this hit, my agent was like, hey, Gray, do you have a, some kind of home studio set up? And I was like, yes. Oh my yes. God. I was so happy. But I'm such an, a jerk that I... Um, <laughs> This is a lot of information, but you can print it. I don't care. But um, I was really mad at him because the judge said that I was paying him all this alimony and the judge said he could use the studio. I'm like, he's going to oh. use the studio at my house while I'm paying him. All. I was like, he can rent a studio. And the judge is like, no, he gets to use it because it's part of his job or whatever. Anyway, so I was like, oh, really? Well, the air conditioning's on my side. So I, 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 I cut off the air conditioning in here. And now who this petty lady is just hot. I'm, I'm recording in here during the summer. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I did that. I really messed myself up. And he and I are close friends now, and I think he's wonderful now. But and I kept telling him, I was like, I'm sorry that I did that. I, I now I'm really paying for it. <laughs> oh, well. Wait a minute. Is that the husband you met on Twitter? Yes. <laughs> I know. I know. It's just like Twitter. You, Twitter is men at their best because you know they're just funny and cute and charming, and you can kind of like just look at pictures of them, and then they're also funny because funny means a lot to me. I can't just go out with some cute person. I don't care. I mean, if you're if I always actually being cute is a strike against you because when I see a handsome man, I think he's probably dumb and not interesting. You know, didn't have to work so, that hard. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so I usually just kind of like write those people off, and it always surprises me when someone is actually attractive and funny and smart. <laughs> so, but Twitter lets you know that ahead of time. Then you're like, oh, this person's funny and smart. Let's see if they're at all attractive. <laughs> well, listen, and to to my listener, if you have not checked out Gray's Twitter account, please go check her out on Twitter. You are hilarious. I don't, where do you come up with this stuff? I mean, I, I just have random thoughts all day. I, oh, too many, too many. I was like, I would never date someone who posts as much as but I But you're hilarious, though. <laughs> and, well, I, and you've got I'm all these saying. followers. Oh. <laughs> I, I, it's all po po I hate that politics is completely taken over my Twitter. So I try to put like a funny thing in every now and again because when people are all politics, I'm like, ah, it's like, it's like, you know, I know. Like, but you have the humor and protein. You got to put in some chocolate every now and again. You know? <laughs> and yet another way you have your voice, Gray. <laughs> Gray, it. it has been such a joy to speak with you. Is there anything else that you want to say? You got something coming up? Anything you want to promote or? I'm, uh, there's a lot of things happening. I'm in this new show um, called, well, I'm thinking like, what can I talk about? Well, I, I, the, the guy who created the Walking Dead comics, he wrote this comic called Invincible and they've made a cartoon out of it. And it's all celebrities except for me. It's like Sandra O. Oh, um, J.K. Simmons, like all these big names, but and I got like really good parts in it. So good. I know it's announced. So I'm not like, but there's a few other things that I, you know. I'm still doing the Loud House. I still do um, Scooby. I'm still I'm Jeepers. I'm still Daphne on Scooby Doo, and that's that's fun. And I got to do a panel with Elvira for at Comic Con, so you can they can people can watch that um, for Comic Con in New York. New York Comic Con is all online now. Well, let me talk um, about that because when you go to those conventions. People, do they, they come to you like you are the voice, like my favorite of your voice is the Jetsons, okay? <laughs> because oh. that, was, that was my favorite one. That was my favorite Sorry. animation. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, now. <laughs> but your fans, do they, do they come to you and follow you as that voice or do they not know who you are or how does that work from when you're a voice? Well, sometimes, you know, you'll have someone sitting at the table to, because I hate to deal with the money. I feel bad even asking for it, but, you know, they pay you ahead of time and then you kind of are working off what they've paid you. So I can't not charge. It's weird. Anyway, right. but there's always someone there handling that. And um, sometimes when I go for a coffee break or whatever, it's so funny because I'll come back and they go, oh, they're like, this person came up and just gushed for like five minutes. Like, oh my gosh, you're my childhood. I love you so much. And they were like, I didn't have the heart to go. I'm not her. I'm just waiting for her to get back from her coffee break, you know, because I'm, you know, anonymous and my, my poster just has my 
my name and my characters. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, there are so many wonderful people that I, now that the internet is so prevalent, people watch a lot of like, you know, uh, press kit stuff and like old interviews and stuff. So they have gotten to know my face, but, but usually I've, pretty much anonymous i could go anywhere and nobody ever i mean i've gotten recognized a few times but it's never it's always like uh, I'm, I'm amazed and they're like i don't want to bother you i'm like no bother me bother me that lets me know i'm doing my job absolutely Jennifer you gotta do this doesn't happen all the time right you've got to do cameos put that oh. out there have you started doing that oh yes that oh that's great i i had some kids i'm a lowey on league of legends and they and these kids had me do this the whole thing and allow his voice to their opponents. I mean, it was just, it's fun, but they. Yes, I do them every night. Every night. I you do, I was about to say, you must n nonstop. Well, so if I don't do them every night, they pile up and then I start going, I should just quit. I can't do it. You know, like, but, <laughs> but it's, it's great. And it's a great thing. And I'm so grateful that I just feel so my, you know, I have friends who do hair or like do, and they're just, their lives fell apart during this. And yeah. I just feel so blessed to still be able to do this in my garage and like do cameos and do, I'm, I'm just glad that what I do is not like an in-person thing, which is amazing. Absolutely. So, yeah. Now, did, great. Did you take classes or do you teach classes? What's your whole thing about workshops and classes and coaches? Well, I do. I am the worst teacher ever. <laughs> I'm so awful because I want to do it. So I, I instead of I'm just terrible. I could destroy people. Like you know, they do it, and then I'm like, no, no, it, that like no. Here, give me your. <laughs> let me just try it. Let me just and because I'm just such an actor. I'm not a director. But mm -hmm. um, but I did. I when I first moved to LA, I went to Calmonson and Calmonson and took classes. I love and, them. Yeah. I love Kathy. She's so great. And yes. yeah, I was like young. I interned with them actually to learn what people looked for when they were cast. I, you know, it was free and I, I mostly killed bugs for Kathy and stuff, but I did hear <laughs> what the winning reads were. And I was like, I see what set them apart. I see why they picked that person over that person. Cause everyone was pretty good. You know, there weren't, there hardly ever was anybody going, Oh, that's not good at all. Cause everybody was a pro in their game. So I learned a lot from that. Um, and then I, I, I did, um, animation classes at voice tracks West, um, and I still go to them all the time. Love I'm them. Next to Chin Chin. Yep, love them. Um, mm -hmm. And then I, yeah, I made a demo with Susan Palio at Voice Tracks West. And then after that, I got my, my agent. And I still go back to the same people that I worked with, you know, Charlie Adler. Love uh, him. Blue, love them. Yeah, Ginny McSwain. Uh, oh, gosh, Colette Sunderman has given me my house. Like, I mean, she's, every time I get recognized for something, I always think, thank you, Colette. Like, thank she's you, the one Colette. who got that part. Yeah. And I mean, just oh, there's so many. Lisa Schaefer. A lot of them started signing people in, like the woman who, who directs the Loud House. She was like a. She signed me in at Disney. That's one thing. Advice. I, I would never be mean to people anyway. But be nice to everybody. Be nice to the receptionist. Be nice to the people who sign you in. The coffee people. Everybody. Because you will meet them again. They're on a track. That's They're true. And I didn't even think about that back then. I was just nice to people. But but there's a woman who works for um uh blizzard games and she cast me all the time and she's like gray i never forgot i was just a receptionist at the blizzard and you were always so nice you always asked me about my family you remember details about she had a kind of a crazy like mother her her, her husband's mother was her husband's grandmother was a little bit woo -woo, and she would tell me <laughs> the best stories so anyway i she's like you always remember that and so i, I thought if i become a casting director i'm gonna cast her so Aww. be nice to everybody yeah, take, get, take your classes, um, you know, and, and your auditions are so important. I was, I was telling people, if you don't book right away, um, they have to, you have to be in the top five, like for a year or something for them uh, on the callbacks for them to go, okay, that person's reliable. They, they reliably give great reads because it's the casting person's job on the line. Mm -hmm. And if, if you come, if they cast somebody, they don't know and have only just, they did a good job at one audition and you mess up their whole career, their careers on the line. Yeah. We're going to go, Oh, this casting person didn't do a good job. This person, we have to replace them. There's a big problem. You know? So I said, you, if you have to make the top tier for a while, so they go, okay, that person's good. We can trust that if we cast them, they'll, they'll turn in a good performance. Mm -hmm. So, um, I told somebody that yesterday and I, I don't even know if this is like, yeah, a but that's thing. good. <laughs> Any other tips you would give to people who are, who really want, yeah, there's so many people who, and we can't blame them, want to break into this business. What top tips? Well, I used to tell people to get into theater stuff. I know you can't now, but but I feel like theater is the closest thing to voiceover because it's like very broad characters. And there's still characters I did on stage, you know, in my college days and stuff that I still, Mrs. Bernardo, the acting teacher on Loud House. I still, <laughs> I, I do a voice that I used to do on stage, you know, just like, she's very like, you know, and um, so there's just so many things that, 
Oh, and I also did a character that that I talked like this when I was on uh, in plays, and now I use her. And she's Cheryl. that character whose hands go like this. Yeah, she's yeah. She works in the office, and she anyway. Um, so there's a lot that because they're broad, you know. Um, and sometimes you know, on camera actors don't do so well at voiceover because they're they're they make very quiet choices that on screen are very realistic and amazing. Um, and so do some theater. Also get like your own platform, start a Twitch or a, like a, a TikTok or like thing to get fans. Cause I've noticed so much casting now is like, um, you know, who this person has a million followers. So we're going to get, her right. start, you know, and so if they can get, and also on social media, I didn't, I hated Twitter and stuff like that. I would have never gotten on it. Had I not gotten on a little podcast called Mike detective. It was on earwolf. It was with Rob Hugel and myself. And they said, you know, um, you know, tweet about this thing. And I, you know, you can tweet to announce the show. And I was like, Oh, I don't have that. And they're like, Oh, you should have it. Cause you know, you can help promote shows you're on and it, it'll be good, you know, for casting. So I did it. And I'm like, Oh my God, thank God I did this because now a lot of times they'll go, they'll look at Twitter followers. If it's between two actors, they'll see who's got more followers who can help. Oh, you're them. getting it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, Tara Strong still got like a million or something. I have like, I have like ninety thousand. <laughs> <laughs> but who's counting? <laughs> anyway, but um, yeah. So, but and yeah, I don't know. I just, I it was something that I did because I thought I'm just gonna do this. There's no other choice. I, I mean, I, I have to be an actor. I can't. I mean, even if I live in a box, I have to be an actor. That's all right. I'm you were born for, for it. You really were great. No question. No question. People are like doing it for money or do it or like, or if I have people that say, should I stay in acting? I always say no. And they're like taken aback. And they're like, well, you don't. And I said, no. I said, if, if you're asking me, yeah. then you shouldn't. You sh it should yeah. only be a thing that nobody could talk you out of. They could not drag you away from it. You, you know, I would never ask someone, should I stay doing yeah. this? And we know it gets tough. I, I can remember those days when you would just do so many auditions and nothing was coming through. And, you know, and, and I was like, my attitude is getting bad. I got to go take a, a course or a class or something just to get me, because that's really the work. The work is auditioning. And, yeah. you know, like Dr. How do, what do you tell people? Do, well, how do you hang in there when nothing's coming through the auditions or... I get a bad attitude too. Did, did you read for Doc McStuffins like 80,000 times? Yeah. Yes. And I got such an attitude about it. I was like, I, they don't like me apparently. You know, I'm not going <laughs> to sing that damn song again. Like I'm learning all this. I know. I, and so I started not. And then I, 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 I love the casting person. So I was like, I keep getting uh, Doc auditions and I've done like 50 of them, not gotten anything. So I, I, and she was like, oh, great. She's like, you know what? Actually, we really want you to, we want you to be on it, but we don't want to waste you on some little tiny part. We wanted to give you, and I was like, oh, I feel bad. Oh, I, like, I didn't I understand the process. I was so mad at you guys. I was like, you hate me. Why? Um, yeah, so uh, I ended up I ended up voice matching Amy Sedaris. That's how I ended up getting my foot in the door over there. Oh, my gosh. Amy Sedaris, they couldn't. She was just busy and working on projects, and so I just voice matched her, and then I ended up got to do Disco Daisy, you know, Disco Daisy, and she just had such a good time. Well, she was Disco Daisy, and then she was Dress Up Daisy. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but The Simpsons, I actually ended up replacing Rusie Taylor because she passed away. So oh, I that's just, right. Yeah, okay. So um, it's, I mean, I'm, I, if she Now, was you knew, girl. you knew Rusie. I did. I did. We would go to dinner and we would, uh, we, when our, our husband, we, you know, we would go on double dates. She and her husband, Wayne, he played, she was Minnie Mouse and he was Mickey Mouse and they were just yeah. the most in love couple ever. And um, we would just, they were just the best couple. And then he passed away about, I don't know, maybe, wow. maybe eight years ago or something. I can't remember exactly, but, she, and I just mm -hmm. thought, oh my gosh, how awful for her. Cause they were just a little duo. They traveled together for Disney. They did everything. And I actually didn't even know that she was on the Simpsons. So when the audition came around, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm matching Rusi. Cause I knew she had passed, but I was, and I was like, oh, that would be really an honor. Cause I love her so mm -hmm. much. And so then when I got that, it was, and also it's the Simpsons. I was amazed. And so it's been so fun to be a new part of that. Um, yeah, and to have that personal story yeah. as well. That you're carrying a piece of her along also. And an audition for something that you were doing. <laughs> Say what? Well, oh, 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 no. Sometimes, oh, I, it's like. No, times. wait a minute. Whoa, 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 what? <laughs> yeah, where they're like, the part comes through and it's like, oh, this looks familiar. Hmm, I think I play this part. <laughs> like, okay, well, I guess they don't want me. I have still sent an audition in, but I send something totally different because I'm like, I guess you didn't like what I was doing. Maybe I can do it again <laughs> as this. 
Yeah, you didn't get on in there and go, you creeps. Oh, I know, I know. It's just like, oh, oh, it's so funny. Also, so I, a lot of times I don't read the script. I so I and I because I'm just you know I'm busy with the kids and the thing. And if I read every script, I just I wouldn't have any time. It's so, uh, right. so, I, so I usually like kind of breeze like right before I'm like, okay, okay, my lines, okay, great. You know, I'm just I'm just kind of like smiling. <laughs> yeah, the, the old adage, you know, like BS, BS, my line. Okay, so I um. So anyway, I was at the Green Lantern and the, 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 the writer came out and he's like, it's a pretty heavy script, right? And I was like, yes. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, yeah. So what do you think? Are you, and I'm like, oh, I just, oh, I, just I love, you know, I just, what do you, you know, I, it's, you know, I guess it is what it is. And I'm excited and I'm, you know, I was just like trying to just, I just was like, oh God, please don't ask me any specifics. But so as we're recording, I'm realizing like, oh no, I'm dead. I'm dying. My character's dead. <laughs> it's like, so pretty much I was like, well, I guess this job's over. But yeah, but I, I should have read the script so I could have like emotionally prepared because I kind of found out that I wasn't on the show anymore. Like in that paragraph, it's like. He was, he was testing the waters. He was like, she's okay with it. Yeah, he's like, she's <laughs> She seems good, you know, and then we're recording and I'm like, oh, this is my last dying. Oh, my. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And at that point, they knew you hadn't read it. Yes, and I did. I, I fessed up to it. I was like, you guys. I was like, I'm so I sorry. That. I did not read this. And I just tried to fake my way through knowing about it in the lobby. And, and I was like, oh, I'm so, but it'll be fine. <laughs> well, you will come back to life again and again and again. Well, Great. Thank, thank you see. so much for spending this time with me. I really appreciate it. I, you know, like I say, you're one of my favorite folks and it's always good to hear. But to hear your whole story and to hear your journey and um, and in your delightful way of storytelling, we sure do appreciate you. I Thank you. you. I can't wait to see you in person and give you a big, you know, non. I know when we can hug and yes, work yes. together as a yes. team. It'll yeah, it'll be, you'll, you'll, it'll be one of those ones where you're trying to burp me to get rid of me. Like, okay. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, All right, know, take care, darling. Stay safe, keep working, and I'll see you in the studio soon. I can't wait. Okay. Bye. I know. Bye. <laughs> Don't forget to follow me on social media at Rolanda Watts. That's R-O-L-O-N-D-A-W-A-T-T-S. At Rolanda Watts on all forms of social media. That's, you know, Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook and even TikTok. Yep, TikTok. <laughs> my magic tiara! My power! Do you have spring fever? It's okay. There's no law against being crazy without a monkey. Happy Spring Fever! Sorry I'm late. I had to stomp a paparazzi on the way over. You are a pig! All of the great directors are a pig. You must be brilliant. I'm a take it apart. Do you mind up in your shut? I'm very busy. Hypnotist and palm reader. All right, happy? Can you go now? That's right. Get a load of Johnny. Uh, I mean, Jenny. Ha! Jenny Brava. That's it? Maybe that's the lesson. If you're gorgeous, you can get anything you want! What? What? Daddy, I saw you on the news. Are you okay? <laughs> you know I can't cook, Daddy. No me voy a ir de aquí hasta que vacíes tus bolsillos, Dulce. Mama, I swear I don't have any more candy. Except those. Now that he's got the cuffs off, he could be anywhere. Hey, that's the kid who must have done the popping, and he's got that one too, just like Pickle said. We're ready, Dad. We will avenge you, Father, and we will never forget. You were always the weak one, distracted, unfocused. May Aku punish you for your sins. <laughs> um, Sully. Good, because getting dressed by yourself is definitely not even in your league. The Danger Ranger X700 K9 Demo Unit! That's why you have to be very careful around any dog you see. Oh, we have the answer! Always use a collar and leash when you walk your dog! Gosh, Clifford, I wonder what everyone's looking at! Miss Carrington has a boyfriend? But Miss Carrington... <laughs>